How's it going, guys? Okay, so today I'm going to teach you how to attach, export a cat rig to Unity. So first off, in order to get the cat rig, just go to create objects, go to helpers, expand your tool list, go to cat objects, select the cat parent, create it. Then in the modify panel, you can select one of the many different options and skeletons that you have. For today, we're just going to use the base human model. Okay. Okay. So essentially, what a cat rig is is a it's an rig with layers already animated on it. So basically, yeah. So it's like the actual rig itself. Go to the motion part, create a new layer, and then if we play it, you should have an animation. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to change it to one of my presets. Okay, so what do we have? Okay, maybe one of those presets from the actual load into existing layer. Okay, so now we got a little more of a, yeah, as you can see, we've got a run cycle here. Now, what we want to do is actually get the actual rig onto a model. So let's turn this off for a minute. And now, now let's just create a model for him. So for the for the sake of this example, I'm just going to quickly show a quick. So I'm going to put a box here. Okay, so obviously your models might be a little bit more detailed, more advanced, not as simplified as this. Just for the sake of the example, I'm just going to make use of this. Okay, another note is to make sure the actual rig is on point with the model itself. Okay, so just for the sake of this, it should be fine. Now we are going to attach this. So I'm going to rename this to body mesh. Now, before I continue, I'm just going to convert this to an editable poly. Now, if any of your seams of the character are separate, make sure you attach everything. So everything on your skin. You can also make use of elements. Also, just a note, when you're exporting a cat rig to Unity, the materials have to be standard. No other material will work. Fair enough. So, yeah. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is what we're going to do is add in the skin modifier. Okay, so now add, go to add bones, just hide every other object, then make sure it's only bones. So you should only have your bones, this Catrick bones there. Now, what we should be able to do is edit envelopes. Now you do this in order to check if your model, just in case everything is all right. Okay. So for the sake of this, I'm not going to actually show case. I'm not going to actually work on now. So if we go to the actual cat rig, we can see now that we have a moving model. Now, for the sake of this, we're not going to showcase this really fully made model, the really rush model. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is a model I've been working on for an assignment. As you can see, I've managed to actually create a couple animations for it. So, let's just play. Got the idle state, got the run state, got a crouching position, and got a jump. Okay. So, how I managed to actually get all that. I should separate each animation to a different layer. So for the sake of this, I'm just going to go here. So you select a movement layer. So a yeah. So you just, when you're adding a layer, it's like this running guy. And then when you're modifying it with the cat motion editor, you can actually then select different parts. So so each part will affect a different part of the body. All right. Okay. Next thing you want. 
do is make sure all the animations are right. This would include envelopes and skins. Make sure you are all happy and all your animations are on a timeline. This is very important. Make sure everything is on a timeline. Okay. Now, here comes the fun part. We're going to export this to Unity. Go to File, Export. Then go to, make sure you have created a new instance of Unity, new Unity project. That way it can be easy. You can directly export the FBX to the Unity project. Okay, so going in there, assets, what do you got for the FBX export? So, Lucas. Okay, make sure you have everything baked, so baked animation. So, all my frames are within 200, all my animations are within 200 frames. And I also got a notepad text files, that way I can actually keep track of all my frames. So, see, 30 idle there. Got my information there. Make sure you keep make sure you keep track of that before you export. And you press OK. I will be exporting. It should give me an error, but this is very common depending on what you've done with your models, any skin thing, any morphers, any anything. They'll most likely be adapted into the final export. And just give some time. Okay, see I got some errors. Now, once we get into the Unity project, should be exporting the actual files now. Now, we go into the Xbox. We expand the model, FBX model. Go to take one in the inspector, select edit. And then what we should see here is all of our animations. Okay, now next thing you want to do, so I just have this little file over here. I'm just going to keep on my separate monitor. So just quickly make up each instance. So first state we got is the idle state. That is from frame 0 to 30. Next state, we have the run state, which is from 45 to frame 70, next states, and you, you more or less get the idea. So no matter how many states, depending on how many states you have, you'll definitely want to go through them all, make sure. That's why I recommend having a text file on the side just to keep track of where you're placing each frame. Okay, okay. so once you got all the states in each position, all the clips, yeah, Make sure each one is, depending on what your state is going to be doing, then you might want to put in loop time. So all my states require a loop time because they're going to be repeating themselves. Like, Okay, so make sure you do that. Then you press apply. Now what this is going to do is separate the one timeline into the different, into multiple timelines, depending on how many frames, how many states you have. Okay, so see, crouch, idle. Now we are going to put him there. It should be fine. Then we got the model there. Go into the animate tab. So Windows animator should be yeah, it's over there. So I already got the place over there. You should then select the model. And then its default state, you just drag to here. Or drag it on top of the model. And then we go into the animator. There we go. We got the first state. Now, if we play this, yeah, we got a model moving. Okay. So now, what we want to do is crouch and then jump. And then, okay, so then what you're going to do is actually put some transitions. So for the sake of this, I'm just going to quickly. I don't think this is going to work, but let's just see if it helps. Because I have the loop state, so it's most likely just going to loop it. Okay, never mind. So it's going to end up on the jump thing because there's nothing coming after jump. All right. 
And what you want to do is actually create instances of Boolean. So this example, we're going to have a Boolean for run. So now this will only change to run if the Boolean states if run is true, All right? Now, what I want to do now is just open up another instance. So, okay, that should be fine. Um, okay, just having some technical difficulties, not able to open up my stuff with Visual Studio. So, let me show you with a text file. So now, okay, so basically, you have the run stage. We're going to have a Boolean for idle. And then etc cetera, etc. Cetera. So jump. Okay, I'm just gonna alt tab to my the projects the animator. Lucas, Lucas over here. This is more or less what a state looks like. So each transition will have their own. It should actually pop up right here. Should pop up. Okay. So basically, you're gonna have a script. Allocated buttons. Okay, so see, you'll only change from crouch to idle if the condition is true. Boolean is true. And same for this idle crouch. Crouch is true. And then where is this text file? I got mono developer for some reason. Okay. So now we got, there we go. Basically made a button script. So now this will be allocated buttons. So there you go. State scripts so and if one thing the pause button yeah yeah so if the idle button is clicked then it makes all the other states all the other booleans false and then the idle boolean true run true I'm sure you get the idea so basically this thing is in place in the button holder and this object has a state changer and each button as object there, then the actual public function is the void is actually there for the access. Okay, so if I play this version of my project, you can see that three minutes. There you go. So if I press run, it will then start running. Press crouch, jump. So basically, you wouldn't necessarily do it for this unless you're making a character viewer. But then again, if you are making a game, so if a uh, character is stationary, like if player is not moving the character, then just have him in the idle state. If player is walking, like player presses WASD, then run, for example. If the player presses control or C, depending on your game preference, then you might be crouching. Yeah, then jump, so space bar, then there you go. So just have different states in the actual scripting in order to help make these effects. So, yeah. Okay. Hope that helped you guys out. Um, if you have any more questions, please leave a comment, like, and subscribe, and I hope you have a good day. Cheers.